This is a very unusual device that was only in the market for a while. It was branded Airwick and it was supposed to be an auto-sensing air freshener that could detect aromas in the room and then counteract that by adding even more of its own to swamp them out. Uh, incidentally, this isn't the sensor. I just touched a provocative as if it is because it's the marketing spin. The sensor is in here. I have a horrible feeling because I, I bought this absolutely ages ago. I may have damaged that in the process of trying to get this cover off. But anyway, we can explore it. We can see what the circuitry is, because by reverse engineering the main circuit board, we can see what the sensor's going to be like. So inside we've got uh, three positions for double A's, presumably a little bit of extra power for the, uh, the sensing circuitry. That is not the correct screwdriver. What is this here? <gasps> it's triangular ones. They don't want us in here. Good. Um... Is this one going to fit? Oh, I don't know if it's going to fit. We'll get it open, even if I have to drill it out. Oh, it's fitting. It's fitting. I have a sneaky feeling that it's going to be a tin oxide style, a volatile organic compound sensor, and maybe, maybe just, this is a guess, it's just detecting its own air pollution that it creates just to know how much more to put out. Ooh, oh, it's got a big blob chip. That's not great, but you know, it's a start. Oh, this was also one of the type that uh, it's only got a single motor because when you energise it, it goes down, but it doesn't go back up. It relies on the springiness of the plunger and literally just ricocheting off the top of the can and then going back up again. Here's a bit we're interested in. Here's the circuitry. Does anything unplug? It doesn't unplug. Well, that's a bit annoying. Oh, now we're into the ordinary type of screws. Let's... Uh, lose all the cogwheels for getting completely where they went before salvaging the motor, because this is not getting reused. Contrary to what you might think, I don't actually use air fresheners in my house much. Just every so often when I want a little whiff of a random aroma. But I certainly wouldn't have it on all the time. Not like an old lady making her house absolutely stink of chemicals. Oh, that's sealed. Oh, that's, that's quite annoying. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's chop some wires. Could chop. And I'll chop the, the motor wires as well because kind of don't need them. And that just leaves the battery connections. Excellent, everything's coming out now. Here's the circuit board. There is one transistor. Is that going to do the motoring? That is doing the motor. Oh, there's quite a few transistors in the back of that. Okay. Uh, I shall take a closer look at this. And I'll also take the sensor out. And then we can explore it. I shall do that right now. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. This reverse engineering was not easy and ended up with more questions than I started off with. So let's zoom down. This is the Arne sensor, apparently. And this is the odour detecting sensor. Now, see a thing that looks like a window here that looks like someone's thrown a brick through it? That, that was the sensor, you see. I'm getting deja vu here. Although I bought this sensor a very, very long time ago, I'm pretty sure that I poked it with a meter probe and it went right through because it's what I think it is is a, a tin oxide sensor for detecting volatile organic compounds. Now, notice how these pads have soldered and that one doesn't. Uh, that wire just pops straight out. Maybe it never worked in the first place because that wire had not been soldered. But the idea of these is you've got two heater connections and you've got two resistor connections. The heater connections, you can see little gold bond wires onto here, apply a current across this and it heats a sort of thin film layer. And on that is a layer of a doped tin oxide. And as the chosen chemical is detected, which can be just a broad spectrum VOCs, uh, it will actually lower the resistance measured over that but it needs the heat to actually be able to do that. That is the sensor. Let's take a look at the circuit board. Here is the circuit board. I was expecting it to be a lot simpler. I thought there were going to be two transistors. One that turned on the motor, that's that one here with its little protection diode, and one that turned on the heater and then maybe enabled the sensor by turning on the sensor just by applying a logic signal to it and then measuring it and using an analog uh, system to read it. I don't think it uses that. It uses something very odd that that 
three transistor cluster is very odd, particularly because this one is actually configured as a diode. It's a diode connected transistor where they connect the base to the collector. Um, and it just turns it into a diode. I'm not sure why they did that, because they've just used an ordinary diode over here. Anyway, this blob hides lots of secrets, sadly. Um, this transistor turns on the heater. There's a little sense resistor, 33 ohm in series with that heater. Uh, and this is, I'll show you it in the schematic, it's a bit odd. The output of the sense resistor, the resistive layer, uh, is filtered with a capacitor. And then it goes through a 100 ohm resistor and disappears into the chip. Then there's also a circuitry over here, which I have reverse engineered. It's a charge pump. Um, and, uh, well, I'll show you the circuitry. That's the, I'll show you the schematic. That's the best thing. Now, some of you asked, how many goes does it take me to make a schematic? This is the first rough up. This is the rough up that I initially did to get enough rough idea of where everything was going to go. And it worked out more or less. Fine. So then I put it onto two layers, two pages, should I say. So let's take a look at the first page. There's a bit of analog weirdness going on here. Let's start off something simple. Here's the three AA cells uh, producing a 4.5 volt supply. There was a 10 ohm resistor and then a decoupling capacitor here to provide a filtered supply to the microcontroller. There's also a 10 mega ohm resistor across that, so when the batteries are disconnected, it pulls the voltage down in a decisive way so that it gives a good clean reset when you put new batteries in. Um, this transistor turns on the motor that presses the nozzle in the can, and it's just basically a 560 ohm resistor, a PNP transistor. Now, all the transistors are PNP. They're all switching up to the positive rail for some reason. Maybe the chip they've used can only pull down negative just because it's a cheap chip. Don't know. But there's the motor with its protection diode across it and a little filter capacitor across the motor itself. Here's the sensor heater. And it's got the 33 ohm resistor here, which I think is to do with current sensing. And really oddly, when the microcontroller wants to turn the heater on, it powers the two bases of these transistors, which is a really odd thing to do with a 1K resistor. One of those transistors has a voltage drop of about 0.6 volts by that uh, diode-connected transistor uh, in its uh, emitter here. So normally it would take uh, about 1.2 volts to turn this transistor on. However, when this one turns on, it turns the heater on, I'm guessing it's very low current, because if it was anything above 18 milliamps, uh, theoretically you'd get about 0.6 volts across that, and it would uh, then, the voltage across here would start turning on this transistor, and if it does, it sends a signal back, it pulls uh, that input high, or is it controlling it in some other way? It's a very strange arrangement. It made me wonder if this is actually to detect when there's been an overload, maybe the sensor heater has failed and started passing too much current. I'm not sure. It's very strange. Uh, there is a, a pair of LEDs built into one LED package with a common positive and a 270 ohm resistor and the red and green chip. Old fashioned gallium arsenide or gallium phosphide green, the dull green. So then we go across the microcontroller. So keep in mind, we've got one, two, three, four, five connections going across the microcontroller for the LEDs, the motor, turning on the heater and then possibly sensing what's happening with the heater. Next page. And this is where we're going to have to start guessing what's inside the chip. I really was expecting it to be an analog divider and just measure the voltage. But maybe, I mean, this is quite some time ago. Maybe it was just cheaper to get non-analog chips. Uh, but anyway, the chip has an oscillator. It's a ceramic oscillator with a a resonator with two decoupling capacitors and also across these pins it's got the option to put a loading resistor for stability. Here's the sense resistor. I reckon it's part of an oscillator. I could be wrong here. I don't know what's in here. Uh, but certain things make me think that they've tried to do it digitally and not with analog means. So it may actually be forming an oscillator possibly even with this circuitry here. And the thing that makes me think this is there's a charge pump here. So if this pin here pulses low, uh, and it does it quite slowly, just random pulses, uh, the sort of short pulses or far distant apart pulses, this transistor will not turn on because the 
base of it will not be pulled. It's got to charge this capacitor first effectively, but it's got to pull it down to the negative rail. It'd be nice if everything was done the other way up, with reference to the zero volt rail, but everything is to the positive rail. Strange. But um, as soon as the pulses in this are long enough, or regular enough, it manages to pull the voltage here down to about 0.6 volts. This transistor turns on. It's got a potential divider here, well, a pull-down resistor more like it. And then it just gives a signal back. And maybe that is detecting a fixed threshold. It's very strange. It seems a bit kind of analogy, but also digitally. It's, it, I really don't know what's inside this chip. I don't know if it's one chip or if it's a couple of chips. Maybe there is an op amp. Um, but the op amp is being used. Uh, see, if they were using an op amp, they just needed the voltage divider. I don't know what they've done here. Maybe it's an application specific chip, but it's got programmable logic modules in it. Not really sure. But whatever happens, uh, when it detects the resistance going low in this sensor, it then triggers the transistor to pump out extra sprays or change the frequency of them. Very strange. I really don't know. Um, I'll let you guys. Come to your own conclusions on that circuitry, it's very strange. Oh, the other thing that I didn't show here was the switch. It's just basically going to the Z-Volt rail and it's got one common and depending where you put the switch, it grounds one of uh, four inputs. Noting that one of those four inputs has its own pull-up resistor, suggesting that they were just basically just optimising a chip. But there we have it. It's a very strange thing. The most interesting is this VOC detector, but... They don't sell these in the UK anymore. They might sell them in America. Um, not sure. I did uh, look. They were selling a similar unit on eBay, but it was from America and it was new old stock. They were wanting about 40 quid for it, plus 40 quid shipping, which wasn't going to happen. But I did see another one listed on Amazon with one star review saying that, well, when they opened it up, all the batteries were leaking and they contacted customer support and customer support told them to buy new batteries and put them in it, which isn't very good customer support at all, is it? But there we have it. Uh, the odor detecting VOC unit. The other thing that comes to mind here is maybe it's detecting its own aroma it puts out and it's aiming for a target threshold. And if the room is uh, bigger, it will put out more squirts to try and get closer to a fixed level of of pollution that it's putting into the air. But there we have it. It's a shame this is broken. It would have been interesting to apply power to it and see how it reacted to different uh, airborne impurities like ethanol and things like that. But that's it, or indeed a can of the air freshener. But um, interesting but strangely complex circuit, and uh, it's very interesting to reverse engineer. It took a long time to reverse engineer. It took a very long time to reverse engineer. And as you can see, didn't answer all the questions. But there we have it, an interesting device.